my name is Amelia and I'm an art teacher with Artists for Kids in the North Vancouver School District. Welcome to the Gordon Smith Gallery. This year, the AFK Art Reach video series brings you artwork and art activities mostly inspired by the theme of play and by the artworks that you see in the gallery around me. And the activities that we share in these videos can be done in the classroom, at home, and often outdoors. And we share these videos every other week on the AFK website. This week, I will share with you the artwork of a Canadian artist named Landon McKenzie. And inspired by her artwork, we will create maps and we'll consider the following questions. How can we represent our own perspectives on a place or an experience through drawing? And how can trying to understand the perspectives of other people help us to respond with respect and thoughtfulness? The activities in this video also connect to the grade five second step curriculum and specifically lesson five, which is on taking others' perspectives. Landon McKenzie is a Canadian painter based in Vancouver. And in her artwork, she often explores mapping. She has included in her paintings maps of cities, maps of transportation networks, maps of systems within the human body, and maps of outer space. And she's interested in connections between maps of the human brain and maps of the physical environment. And she sometimes overlaps images of maps and text in her paintings to represent the histories of different places. Take a look at this watercolor painting by Landon McKenzie. What stands out to you? What colors has the artist used? And what features has she included to represent this place? Do you think that this is an accurate representation of this place? Why might she have chosen to represent this place in this way? The painting is called Artist for Kids Camp. Landon McKenzie was an artist in residence at a summer Artist for Kids Camp at the Chequemist Center in Paradise Valley, and she created this painting at that time. You might be familiar with this location because many students from the North Vancouver School District visit the Chequemist Center as part of the outdoor school program. In fact, all of the artworks that you see on the wall behind me were created by artists representing the environment around the Chequemist Center. And the hawk that is in the case behind me is used by teachers as part of the outdoor learning program. Now, looking at this painting, what do you think stood out to Landon McKenzie about her experience at the Chequemist Centre? Today, inspired by Landon McKenzie's painting, we will create maps representing our perspectives on specific places. And these maps can then be combined together to create one big class map. You'll need some simple materials to do our activity today. Each person will need four square sheets of paper. This should be a thicker paper like cardstock and each square should be eight centimeters by eight centimeters. Everyone will need a pencil and an eraser and a Sharpie and each person will need an eight and a half by 11 sheet of white paper. Everyone will also need some kind of a drawing board or a clipboard or some kind of hard surface that can be used to draw on while walking outside. And we'll need rulers today and also something to add color with. I'll be using a watercolor set with a brush and a paint pot, but you could also use pencil crayons. And we will also need white and black oil pastels. For a warm up activity today, we're going to do some drawing. And this activity is borrowed directly from the grade five second step curriculum and lesson number five. So to start this activity, you will need a hardcover book. 
And this book can be placed at the front of the classroom, standing up, and it could be on a table or a chair. And so all the students in the class will stay in their seats and everyone will need a piece of paper and a pencil. And so what you can do is set a timer for two minutes and everyone is going to create a drawing of this book, but from the spot where they are sitting in the classroom. And this is a quiet activity. So once everyone has drawn this book for two minutes, the drawings can be collected. And you can take some time as a class to hold the drawings up. You could even post some of them up on the board so people can look at them as a group together. And you can talk about how these drawings are similar or different. So you can take a few minutes and discuss some of the questions that I will now pose. So are these drawings all of the same object? They are, but why do they look quite different from one another? Well, we can think about the fact that everyone drew this same object, but from their own point of view in the classroom. So similar to situations in real life, we may all encounter a similar situation, but we see it from our own perspective or our own point of view. And that might look really different compared to someone else's point of view. So today, we're going to talk more about this idea of taking other people's perspectives. And we'll think about how doing this can help us to get along better with other people. To continue to reflect on this idea of taking other people's perspectives, we will now discuss some questions from the second step curriculum. I will ask a question and you could then pause the video and discuss your responses with a partner and then with your class. Can people have different perspectives and still be friends? And if so, why? How can understanding others' perspectives help you to respond in a respectful and thoughtful way? And how would it feel in your classroom if you all really tried to understand each other's perspectives? And now can you think of an example today when you could practice taking another person's perspective? For today's art activity, we will head outside on a short walk. And on this walk, you will need a little drawing board or clipboard. I'll be bringing this along. You will also need your four square sheets of paper and you'll need a pencil. And on this walk, you will be making four stops as a class. And at each stop, you will make a drawing on one of your square sheets of paper. So you will have one drawing for each stop. And at each place, you will draw something on your paper that stands out to you in that environment. And so you'll be drawing from your own perspective or experience. So likely everyone will end up drawing something slightly different. And before you head out on this walk, you might want to do a brainstorm as a class and think about some of the things you might observe in your environment at each stop using your senses. So some examples might include lines or textures or shapes or maybe zoomed in or zoomed out views of plants or rocks. You could also think about drawing sounds or maybe even smells. You could draw maybe garbage or things that have been dropped on the ground, maybe holes or cracks, sticks or patterns. At the first stop on my walk, I have decided to draw some rocks that are built into the side of a building. Because I'll be adding some color to my drawing when I go back inside, I'm going to record a couple notes about what I drew on the back of my piece of paper so that I can remember a few details and add them in when I go back inside.
Now that I'm back inside and I have my four drawings, I'm going to draw over my pencil lines with Sharpie and then erase my extra pencil lines. Now that I've outlined my drawings and erased my extra pencil lines, I'm ready to add color and I'm going to use watercolor paints to do this, but you could also use pencil crayon if you wish. And so to remember some of the colors that I saw when I was outside, I can look back at the notes that I wrote down. So I can remember that the trees that I drew here were dark gray, the sky was a light gray, and there was some bits of green on the trees. And so I can think about what parts of my drawings I want to paint first and I could then let some sections dry while I move on to other sections on some of the other drawings. So I'm going to start with painting these tree trunks and I'm going to leave the sky till a bit later because I don't want the trunks in the sky to bleed together. And one trick I can use to stay within the lines while I'm painting is actually to wash my brush off and to paint on the trees just using water. And then I could get some paint on my brush and the water that I've already put down will help my paint to stay within the lines. And now I'm finished painting inside the tree trunks and I still plan to paint the sky but I'm going to let the trunks dry for now and move on to another painting and then come back to that sky. To add some texture to my painting, I'm going to apply my paint now to some of these rock shapes using dots of paint on a section where I've already added water. Then I can use that same technique and mix together a couple different colors to get a different texture on this other rock. Once you have painted all four of your drawings and you've let the paint dry, you will then need a ruler, a pencil, and a black and white oil pastel for the next step in our project. So to begin with, you will take your ruler and your pencil and you will choose two sides of your drawing to measure four centimeters. So for example, I will choose the top edge of this drawing and here I have four centimeters. I'm just going to make a little mark there and I'm going to measure on this side of the drawing as well, four centimeters, and make a little mark there. And now I'm going to join these two marks together, making a little dotted line that represents a path on top of my artwork. And I can make that path wind however I want over top of my drawing. Like so. And then I'm going to choose either a white pastel or black pastel to overlap on top of my pencil lines. And I might want to think about whether the white or the black will show up more on top of my drawing. So I've chosen black. So here you can see my little dotted path. And now I'm going to do this for every single one of my drawings. Once you've drawn the dotted lines on each of your squares, you could play around with different ways to arrange your drawings. So we could see these drawings as a kind of a map showing your own unique perspectives. 
that you had when you went on the walk with your class. You could now join up with a partner and play around with connecting both of your map squares together into one bigger map. And you could discuss with your partner any interesting differences or similarities that you notice between the different squares that you drew. Can you learn anything new about the environment where you were walking by looking at the perspectives or drawings of your partner? You could also try joining up with a group of four and combining all of your map squares together. Or you could even take the map squares from the entire class and make one giant map. Now, this map shows us that we all have our own perspectives of the same place and of the same experiences. And in some cases, there might be similarities between our own and other people's perspectives. And sometimes our perspectives might differ greatly. To conclude this activity, each person could reflect in writing on the following questions. What does it mean to take another person's perspective? And what is the time you've had to take or should have taken another person's perspective? We would absolutely love to see the artwork that your class has created. And you could share images with us on Instagram using the hashtag AFKArtReach, or you could send us images by email. Thank you so much for joining me, and please do check back in the coming weeks for more AFK ArtReach videos. Thank you.